Civil War in Northern Ireland, The Day of Internment, Part 3. 9th of August, 1971. We didn't know about internment, the soldiers on the ground. Let me say, our officers came from uh, Brigade Colonel Hewlett, who was the battalion commander of the parachute two para. Uh, Major Jenkins, who was company commander, B, B Company, and got all down into the Henry Taggart Hall and explained the situation of what was going to happen on the day of internment. We, the lads were going to be split into small groups. Uh, they'd go into certain houses and capture uh, people in that, that house with a, with a name. Uh, some photographs were provided, but uh, in general, it was just a name. Uh, there's going to be a, I'm going to say, it was a cock up from, from start to finish, to be honest, but uh, I'll describe again what happened. Uh, so everything was pre planned to for the lads to go out at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's when dogs sleep and everybody sleeps, and we wanted to sleep as well. So. I stood in the doorway of the Henry Target Hall and uh, watched out and uh, listened to all the dogs starting waking up all over Valley Murphy. The lads were quick, efficient. They smashed down their doors. They dragged out people out of their beds. Some were closed, some without clothes. Uh, they quickly frog marched them up to the Henry Target Hall where our Company commander and uh, battalion commander were witness to what happened. The typical army, they were treated as combatants, uh, the people to be interned. Uh, when you catch somebody who's a combatant, you're not friendly to them, you rough them up a little bit. And uh, I witnessed these people being interned roughed up, there's no doubt about it. Punched, kicked in the ass, games played on them. Uh, hats, uh, sandbags put over the heads and tied on the heads, hands tied. Uh, I intervened. I saw one guy, and he was shaking, and I stopped it. I, st I stopped them being uh, badly treated. I mean, say, I took them down off these soldiers. And uh, felt his pulse. Fucking hell, I could already feel it was going that fast. The boy was in shock. So I treated him for shock and I, I wouldn't let anybody touch him. He was still in turn, but there was no way he was fucking IRA. I mean, you see, you're, you're looking at a stereotype, I think, you know, but a lot of these guys were just old men and young boys. There was cock ups all the way down the line. Intelligence Corps and police had got this list. Uh, I spoke to one guy in uh, 16 int intelligence court, int, I-N-T. I said to him, how do you spell intelligence? And he couldn't spell it. And to be honest, that was the way things were running. You got British officers, you got the police, you got MI5 and uh, getting together they couldn't organize a piss up in a brewery and this is what was happening on this day. So anyway, all these guys were mistreated. Tor I consider tortures when you, you, you pull your fingernails out and uh, cut you up with a knife and stuff like that. I saw none of that going on. Physically abused for certain. So all these guys were put in a wagons and taken to internment camps and interrogation centers. That was the last we saw them. Uh, us lads were knackered, so I slept down in the Henry Taggart Hall. Uh, with, uh, I think it was about 10 other lads slept in the Henry Taggart Hall. Everybody else was sleeping in the Via Foster School at the top of the Henry Taggart Hall. So we managed to get a couple of hours sleep before dawn. When dawn came, I mean, say, there was chickens running around without heads. They were going crazy. The Catholic population, and they were justified for, for what had happened. 
and we say it was a total embarrassment as a soldier for what I watched. Uh, and we say the Catholics were justified in rioting, and by Jesus did they riot. They were a group uh, was started throwing stones early in the morning. A lot of youth, a lot of kids, all started throwing thousands of stones. We had an observation post was on scaffolding with uh, sandbags on top of the scaffolding and a couple of paratroopers in it. Then came the petrol bombs. Then came the nail bombs and quite a few. I saw about four uh, older guys uh, telling the kids and the youth what to do. Uh, Major Jenkins, the company commander, came down and he went outside with a megaphone. Anybody who throws a petrol bomb, who throws a nail bomb, will be shot. And he repeated that three times. They all got the message, especially the four IRA lads that were organizing all these kids and youth. So instead of the four IRA lads throwing the nail bombs, they give them to kids to throw. The thing with a nail bomb, it's like 360 degree killing area and uh, the kids couldn't throw it that far. So the kids were in danger, but that was the IRA. They were using the kids and that's why I witnessed. The writing went on all day. Thousands and thousands of stones got thrown at the Henry Taggart Hall. A lot of nail bombs, a lot of petrol bombs. It was organized. While, while they were doing all this throwing stones, there was other groups putting up barricades, blocking the entrance into Bally Murphy, actually cutting us off from reinforcements or, and uh, ambulances, as simple as that. So when, when, when something is going to happen in Ireland, you know about it. Everything goes quiet. All the kids and youths pissed off. They all went to home for have something to eat so they can get uh, come back with a vengeance. But something was wrong, for sure. And before they, before they went, I got a big trouble. I, say. I, uh, I shouted, Up with the IRA! As loud as I could. Everything went quiet. Peace on earth. It was brilliant. Then all the young lads were going, hey, 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 and uh, rejoicing for the soldiers shouting that. Then I shouted, by the fucking neck. Bah. The stones started again, and the petrol bombs and the nail bombs. Unfortunately for me, my sergeant major and Colonel Jenkins heard what I shouted, and I got punished for it. When the crowd dispersed, uh, Piggy MacDonald, the, the sergeant major, sent me out. He says, see all them fucking stones out there, Mumford? Start moving them so that the cars and Land Rovers can get in and out of the barracks. So there's me working for 10 hours moving stones. Not 10 hours, sorry, 10 minutes. 10 minutes moving stones. The next thing, bang, 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 bang. In front of me, there was a, a wire fence. And I could see the bullets ricocheting off this wire fence, hitting the fence and ricocheting. Not, nothing coming through and hit me. And we say, another time, it was a miracle. I dived to the deck and I'm stuck there in the open. Henry Taggart all behind me and these machine guns open fire on me. I think there were arm lights on automatic, but it, it's hard to tell. But I know there was a lot of shit coming my way. So I'm stuck there, but trying to hug it, hug the ground. And all I had on me was a nine millimeter pistol. So I got my pistol out and I thought, if I fire this in the air, typical civilians and uh, not so well trained people get their heads down. Just not because the bullets come in at them, just the sound of the bullet coming back, you know, the sound of the bullet thinking, oh, we're getting shot back at, and they duck their heads. So this was my idea. So I fired two rounds in the air. 
and I said, it worked. The duct, and I skedaddled back into the Henry Tag at all. I was panting a bit. But I was the first soldier to be shot at. And I may say, it was a lot of bullets that came my way. So I'll talk about, you only get 10 minutes on YouTube, so I'll, I'll talk about the rest and uh, number four of the day of internment and go, go into real detail about uh, the people that were killed.